Welcome back, Chris. Thanks very much. You told me in the last video, you mentioned that you set one of the climbs. That's right, yeah. That's something I find fascinating. And I was wondering if today, maybe you could show me through some of the climbs that you've set mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and possibly we can get some insight into what goes through a setter's mind. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've got a few in mind that are around V2, V3, yeah. maybe go into the, um, the scary realm, uh, into the realm of fear in terms of height, maybe. <laughs> Do you have a grade in mind first? and then you make a climb that grade? Or do you design a climb, climb it and say, it's this grade? We generally have like a, a, a rough spread of grades for the set mm -hmm. for that day. There'll be a team of setters. Each, each one picks a grade at a time, spends maybe 20, 30 minutes putting it up on the wall. A combination of experience and distance judgment, but also with as much creativity that you can put into it that the time allows you to. That's what you focus on for the first you know, 20 minutes, just putting the black up on the wall. Sometimes you, you have like a, a specific thing that you want to focus on, be it a move or a technique or a hold that you really want to use. Mm. Uh, the angle of wall, the, the grade and the climber that's going to be climbing it generally, or maybe like um, an emotion if you want to get really into it yeah <laughs> like the most experienced setters will, will try and make the climber feel something as part of that route yeah it, it can I, go pretty oh, in depth yeah you cheeky people <laughs> <laughs> yeah for example um, like in the last video we looked at fear yes so that might have played a role in setting the boulder so yeah using a little bit of aspect of fear in that because you haven't got anything to hold and on to you're just hands against the wall. And that's why everybody I talked to found the alternative beta go underneath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was all right with that happening in the end because the down route underneath kind of worked out the same similar grade. Yeah. It was around V2, V3. Yeah. I didn't need to, to block that or, or limit that in any way. Yeah. And how often do you have to tweak climbs? We usually leave it a week to gather feedback and see how people climb it. Mm -hmm. And then if there's any outliers, which occasionally they are, um, then we can tweak them the next next week so you can bring some stiff grades back in line with the, the general difficulty level or if something's if, if a higher grade is too easy then we could eliminate a hold or um, or rotate it slightly sometimes it's you know a slight degree change mm. of angle that yeah. would bump it back up to where it should be here yeah. yeah no interesting I'm not particularly tall I'm five foot mm. how on earth do you set a climb that works both for me and for maybe someone sort of 18 inches taller than me? Yeah, it's a really tough challenge, especially at a center where you have a lot of uh, junior climbers and a lot of families as well. Mm. Being able to set a climb that works for everyone at every height, at every strength level for that grade is really tough. It's a combination of like setting to a certain reach. So generally, if, if you've got a, a large span, I, I consider myself quite an average Mm. height and arm span so for me if I am setting a short reach short reach climb that that's the focus of the block I'll set to um, to elbow reach right and generally that kind of works yeah in addition you can look at the hold types you're using so a lot of taller climbers are also heavier climbers so there's a lot more weight on the fingertips whereas if you're sh shorter and smaller then you're generally a lighter climber. A lot of shorter climbers tend to prefer the more crimpy climbs. You can make more compact boxes to fit into. I love watching taller people struggle on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be quite funny, yeah. yeah. And equally, it can be funny, like seeing a shorter climber trying to do a massive dyno that, uh, <laughs> that a six footer can just yeah. static. Yeah, what have you got in mind for today? We can have a look at an orange block I set, aimed for V2, it's on a big feature of the wall so I can kind of give you some like insight as to what I was thinking when I was setting it and uh, we could work on it and progress all right cool so yeah this orange here oh my gosh <laughs> no it's, way it's, it's not as big as it looks to be honest but How? that's the top that's the top up there yeah okay yeah don't worry the last two moves are on massive drug holds <laughs> so we can work it move by move so I got given a v2 on on paper yeah to say we had a bunch of uh, large orange holds. It was the first day of the set and the wall was quite blank. So our theme of the day was creating what we call king lines. 
which take up a lot of the wall and really like stand out, especially at the front of the centre. You want something that attracts everyone as soon as they walk in. Yes. When I walk in, I can see the shape of this straight away. And when it was set, it was like fluorescent orange. Yeah, exactly. And being V2, it should be quite accessible for a lot of climbers, even for someone brand new. Yeah. You know, if they're putting their shoes on and they look at the wall, they think, hmm, quite big holds. Maybe I can have a go at that. Yeah. So they might try it on. But equally, it should create some nice movement, even for more experienced climbers who climb more than V2 as yeah. well. It should be still enjoyable for those. So I wanted to take advantage of this big like feature of the wall, the belly of the rhino. Do you think about the design and the pattern as much as how yeah, it Yeah, that's, that's another thing, yeah, aesthetics. Yes. You do have to force yourself to balance that with the physical movement of the climb, because yeah. sometimes the aesthetic can limit the movement in quite a way, quite yeah. a lot, but it is really nice if an aesthetic boulder works, yes. both physically and like visually. All of this is the rhino, isn't it? This is the rhino set. I tend not to climb the rhino much because I find it quite daunting for, for two reasons. One, it's high. Mm. It's like your showpiece. Um, it looks amazing. But the second reason, it's right by the reception yeah. desk area. Yeah. And yeah. I always think people might be watching. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, away. Yeah. It's, yeah, I get that as well. It's like easy to think that like, oh, everyone's watching you. I have to make this move. Yeah. But you can also think of it as like, everyone's in the same boat trying this for. You might be one of the better climbers in the room at the time. Like, you mean you the only show person? Off a bit. <laughs> uh, but also everyone's like supporting you on desk as yeah. well. So I know it is very supportive here. We could work the first few moves, see yeah. how it is. Yeah. And then, uh, and then go from there. Right, Definitely. get your shoes on. All right, let's give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> is this meant to be a dino? So, it's a little jump. <laughs> oh, not again. It. <laughs> is it meant to be a dino to get uh, to it? Just a little hop to it. A ho little hop? Yeah. Right, I'm on. This is so much worse than I thought it was. I don't, I can't do this. Nah, you're good, you're good. Oh, that's yeah, a Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get that. I think I've got the wrong angle. Right, let's try this. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice, <sighs> Michelle. That's it. Yeah, really good. Ah. Uh. Yeah, so this is a good place to practice the fall. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. That was a really good first <laughs> first try. So unlike other climbs where it's all about technique and you get used to techniques, mm. this one seems to be all about strength. When I'm at home, if I try and do a pull-up, I can do one in a day and that's it. And I can't do another one all day until the next day. Mm -hmm. So I'm a bit wary of using all my strength. Yeah. And that's it. And that's a very short video. <laughs> See you next week, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely need to plan your exertion, like strength exertion. Yeah. If you feel you've got a limit, limited capacity to use before you're totally zonked, your next try should feel a lot easier. Where I jumped down, yeah. I always thought I'd be able to match in that little hole in the pocket and then move my left hand across. But when my hand was there, it's quite obvious I wasn't going to fit two hands in. And it's quite hard to match, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's the idea. Hold selection. <laughs> yeah. Going for that one. You do that on purpose then. Yeah. <laughs> but the reason is, when you find that, it usually means that the set is trying to force a sequence. Yes. So if you can't go left hand and match, then the only other option is to go right hand to it and not match. So you were saying I need to go back a move okay, right and hand go right hand. Yeah. yeah. Which means that hand, I can go right, yeah. left, I can do a small match? Yeah. Right, yeah. left. Exactly, okay. yeah, yeah. Yes. And it improves the flow. Yes, um, it'll So feel... you get, you're basically going left, right, left, right, left, yeah. right, instead of left, left, right, right, left, <laughs> left, right, right, which and adds extra moves, so yes. many more moves. It'll yeah. double the length of the climb yep. and double the energy. Use more strength. Exactly, yeah. I see. Right, let's see you do this first bit. The little uh, hip throw to that should make it a little bit easier. So left hand here, feet up to a good hold. You can match if you need. And across, okay. Nice. Yeah, so that's the intended first half. That made it look a lot smoother. As you're getting your shoes on, what I was saying with the first hand movement. Yeah. Throw your hips towards it. So you have a bit of momentum going towards the first hold rather okay. than just pulling and reaching. Yeah. 
So first version is pulling in and reaching. And then second version is hips and hit it at the dead point, at the, at the peak of the swing. It's actually very hard to pull in, lock off and just reach. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean about being Because you're like on a sloper a, as well. Yeah. Yeah, being like a, a pull up and a pull up and grab. Oh, nearly. Almost. Yeah, nice. That's it. Yeah, really good. Vegan. Nice. And good. So ma match your feet now and then left foot out. That's it. And hang down on a straight arm. So I'm nice gonna fall. straight arm on the right and you can fall if you need to. I'm gonna fall. Yeah, that's all right. Oh! Nice, good effort. <laughs> I feel like I'm playing a game of twister with the wall and the wall is definitely gonna beat me. It's a pretty twisty move in yeah. the middle, yeah. So you need to get comfy on this right hand pocket. Yeah. And Straight arm. Straight arm low I find is the yeah. least exertive and most efficient way yeah. of, of lowering yourself slowly and getting across to the next hold. Okay. Yeah. Shall I demonstrate that yes, position? Please. I like your method actually there as well, with a little push off the left. So you go left hand up to here, little match, right hand over. So here, hip, bring hips across if you can. Okay. Lower down. Okay, so yes. both, both my arms going through the, that sequence were okay. completely straight. So it should just be uh, finger hanging strength. Okay. Which I think you've got. I have a slightly dodgy right shoulder. Okay, um, yeah. So I can't hang one handed. Could we maybe get majority of weight on the right hand and then a, a, a small match? That's it. Yeah, nice. That's it. Get both feet on, really good. Set, come down low. Yeah, you're good, you're good. Oh. Nice, oh. that's so good. Yeah, 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 really good effort. Oh, dead. I didn't swing across far enough. When I let go of my hand, I need to use that swing to go across. You do want to lower slowly yeah. so that you're in control and you can still hang it. Yeah. Let's try that position again. See if we can change anything. Maybe a little push off the right foot. Okay. Match feet, bring feet all the way across. And then this, this, this hold is much better okay. to hang and, and pull under that, uh, un undercut. Okay, well Just I'm sweating now. <laughs> this is quite an intense like, yeah. physical boulder for you yeah. for, at your climbing level. On this kind of angle, if I was at my limit as well, I would take at least five or six minutes between attempts. Yeah. Regaining that strength is very important. When, when you get there, if you feel you need a little bit of extra pull, yeah. use the bubble gum pinch. Maybe the purple as well, yeah? A guppy that. It's a slope, yeah, sloper on top, yeah? yeah. If that helps, yeah, e yeah. Either, either one of those. Yeah. Just to get across and yeah. get into the next move Is and help you practice. <sighs> Why do I do this? <laughs> yeah, super strong. Nice. So slowly lower into it. What's that? Yeah, nice. Push across. You can. Yeah, really good, Michelle. Oi! Come on, try hard. That's it. Oi. Whoa, really good oh. effort. You got it, though. That was oh. so good. So, so good. I can see what I was trying to do, though. That was really fun. Yeah. I'd, I'll definitely work on that. Yeah. And it's... yeah, I could tell you were trying really hard yeah. like, to hold that position and, and get past it, even. No, I'm really happy with that. Yeah. Could you show me how the whole climb is done though? The full intended? Yes. I'll just refresh my memory. Obviously this is the intended beta that I set it as for a climber of my height. Yeah. Whereas we're finding slightly different beta for when you climb it, but it works in both ways. Yeah. When you climb it like that fast, you can see the flow, you can see how all the movements flow into one. You know, the momentum just gets you there. Yeah. Speed is a big factor, it combines very well with flow. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Brilliant. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah, it's a good project climb. <laughs>